Just a quick little heads up here for this Monday video report. If you happen to already watch the Monday video report, this is the same damn report. I'm just re-recording it and resubmitting it out there for everyone because the first one had some problems with the audio track, and I certainly don't want to have you go through the inconvenience of having to put your ear up to the speaker or to your cell phone to go through all that trouble just to hear my lovely voice. So far be it for me to inconvenience you or myself since this is the third time I've had to re-record this report from the top of my head in the last 20 minutes. But let's get started because, hey, I have nothing better to do than to talk about this game on Baltimore and Houston. But before I get to that complimentary play, you have probably read the report or heard the report about how NFL betters absolutely won a fortune yesterday because of how the favorites dominated in Vegas and the NFL and how sports book directors lost their shirts again, as they have all month long in the NFL, because favorites not only covered 11 of the first 13 games on the board yesterday, but in the month of November, the NFL chalks are 37, 15, and 4. Please cry me a river. Yes, you're all shedding tears for those sports book directors, are you not? Yeah, right. Just like they were shedding tears for us when those underdogs in October, yeah, four or five weeks ago, were barking every single day. What have I told you for the last 20 years? Basic human nature dictates that we as gamblers always gravitate toward the favorites and everything is gambling and gambling is cyclical. What comes around goes around. And trust me, the record-setting numbers that Vegas turned in terms of their sportsbook handles in October, they're going to win back the money they've lost in the NFL this month. Hell, they'll win it back in December in the college bowl season, which is unpredictable as always. They're going to get the money back. They are not going to be tearing down the casinos. They are not going to be putting up the going out of business signs on the sportsbook kiosks. And that money, that small little bit of money they've lost the past few weeks in the NFL, which is dwarfed by comparison to the amount of money the illegal sportsbooks have lost. You know, those ones run most likely by American businessmen fronting those organizations in Costa Rica and other third world countries. So the U.S. doesn't make a dime on taxes and the third world countries probably don't make a dime on them either. Those illegal sportsbook operations that, oh, you know, probably make hundreds of more money than all the legalized sports books in the state of Nevada combined. That's why the Supreme Court hopefully will wise up when they hear that case from New Jersey, December 3rd or 4th and six months or maybe six weeks from now, decide to allow New Jersey and then other states will follow and allow legalized gambling in the United States. Yes, that would be the smart move. Believe me, even the money they lost offshore, they'll recoup those losses as well. And when they do, they will not be shedding any tears for us. So please, no more of these asinine stories about, oh, you know, thank God the Packers covered in the Sunday night game. It didn't make up for all the losses we suffered earlier in the day, but it stopped the bleeding just a little. It was just a little tourniquet on a big gaping wound. Please, please, please. These people are making money hand over foot. Fist over fist. You know, they don't build those monoliths in Vegas for no reason at all. This is just, again, an example of why I say to you, forget about the overall picture. Forget about whether the favorites are covering, the underdogs are covering. Listen, there are guys in this business who will tell you, oh, you know, you got to bet the dogs. You always got to bet the dogs. Yeah, in October, they're the ones screaming from the rooftops. You got to bet the dogs on Monday night. You got to bet the dogs in the NFL. Where are they now? Where have they been the past three weeks? These are the same guys who are on Wall Street are out there saying, you know, it's going to be due. We're overdue for that bearish run. The market's going to have a 35% correction. Hmm? Where? We had a little blip at the end of September. We had a little blip three weeks ago. Where is that 35% long-term correction? I'm waiting. You're waiting. Where's it been for the last four years? I'm waiting for it. Those voices, you can't listen to them because forget about the big picture. Focus on the one game. Every game's a 50-50 betting proposition. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. All that matters, whether you're on Wall Street and you're betting 
whether that stock is going to go up or down or tonight's game is going to be the underdog of the favorite cover. One game, 50-50 betting proposition. This isn't you walking into your local convenience store and playing Powerball where the odds are stacked against you because they're just astronomical. This isn't my wife walking into her favorite casino and playing video poker. You notice I can say this because my wife is nowhere around. She can't hear it. What, you think I'm stupid? But again, 50-50, it's a betting proposition. That's all you're worried about. Tune out the outside voices. Forget about these asinine stories. Because as good as the favorites have been here in November, trust me, everything is cyclical. It's going to turn around. And that's why you never bet the trends of how the public is going. Forget about them. Just not important. Okay, listen, great day, Saturday and Sunday here for the majority of the handicappers here at the site. Just like Thursday was eh, and Friday was awful. Again, don't have the trends. Uh, yesterday, the hottest guy or the big play was uh, Chris Jordan, uh, the ninth ever 3,000 star triple year wager NFL release of his career. Now 9 and 0 with them. He had the Eagles. You got it for over half price off. I'm sure Chris was probably shaking in his boots when he saw that later in the day I came out with a top rated 15 dime play on the Eagles as well as I followed my 15 dime winner on Oklahoma on Saturday, which snapped a four day losing streak. Also, Tommy Brunson now three for three with 150 dime NFL releases since he joined the site back in September as he scored with Carolina. Thank you, Cam Newton, with your comeback at the Jets. Never should have been that close, but that life was why the line was five and a half points in that game, right? But the hottest guy remains Matt Rivers who is now 5-0 with his NFL Blank Check Game of the Year releases after scoring yesterday with the Rams, who stopped New Orleans. Eight-game winning streak, 26-20 win, and that came on the heels of his Vikings winner on Thanksgiving Day. Five for five with NFL Blank Check plays tonight. The 17th ever Blank Check NFL waived the rating release in his career, and he is a charter member of the site. He was here 15 and a half years ago when I started these sites. It's on the Texans Ravens. It's the half price play of the day. The coupon code is blank, B-L-A-N-K. He's also 7-1 overall this football season with blank check plays, pro and college combined after scoring in the Civil War with Oregon in that 69-10 route of Oregon State on Saturday. And also, by the way, Tommy Brunson tonight looking to go 3-0 and so far this college basketball season with 100 dime releases it's on the second of the ACC Big Ten Challenge games, Wisconsin-Virginia. You get it for over half price off by using coupon code TOMMY. First one was Virginia Tech over Detroit by 32 points on November 10th. The second one last Monday, West Virginia over Long Beach State by 29. Let's talk about this game tonight. Baltimore, seven and a half point favorite. Uh, you know, the Ravens have not won consecutive games since uh, the first two weeks of the season. The Texans haven't won consecutive games all season long. Um, interesting factoids here. Since John Ball Harbaugh arrived in Baltimore, the Ravens are 11-1 in night games, best record in the league, and they've won nine consecutive primetime straight-up games. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Uh, you know, you got a Ravens team that's coming off a 23-0 win at Green Bay, their third shutout of the season, where they absolutely toyed with Brett Hundley. But then again, last night, Brett Hundley looked like Brett Favre was playing for him instead against what was a good Pittsburgh defense. So does the same fate await him as awaits uh, Tom Savage tonight? Listen, Ravens have a strong pass rush. They're number two in the league in pass defense, giving up 185 yards a game. That's secondary, 16 interceptions. That's best in the NFL. Tom Savage, remember when he started the season opener against Jacksonville before giving away to Deshaun Watson? That was a game in which Jacksonville had six of their 10 sacks against Savage. This is a guy who has fumbled three times the past two games in five and a half games this season. He leads the NFL with six fumbles, a stat that I uncovered in, in researching this game. Of quarterbacks who have completed at least or attempted at least 100 passes, he is dead last in the league with an average yards per pass of 4.54 yards. Now, the league minimum 6.3 yards. League minimum 6.3. He's at 4.5, which tells you his pocket protection is collapsing. He's got happy feet. No pocket presence. He's constantly checking down dumping off short little passes, and he's not finding his second and third targets, either because he's not seeing them or he's not having time. That's what happens when you have an average yards per completion of 4.5 yards. And again, the league average is 6.3. He's not even close to the league average. He's got one gut receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, who's a damn good one. 
But the Ravens, they got a good secondary. They got one of the top coverage cornerbacks in the game and Jimmy Smith. If he isn't on them like butter on bread, I'd be shocked tonight. They've got a good pass rush with Terrell Suggs. At the age of 35, he's still got a strong motor. I think he had two and a half sacks against the Packers last week. Um, their run defense has improved here in the last few weeks as well. You know, this Houston team is not the Houston team you remember from years ago, so don't get caught up with it. They're giving up 26 points a game. Their pass rush isn't nearly as strong without J.J. Watt. Their run defense isn't nearly as strong without Brian Cushing. Baltimore's offense, eh. Joe Flacco, eh, can he throw a ball over 15 yards with accuracy? I don't think so. Nine touchdowns, 11 interceptions. His pass protection isn't that good either. But I think the defense rises to the occasion. They got three shutouts already this season. I think it's a low-scoring game. If I had to bet it, I'm going to go with Baltimore, laying the seven and a half points, buying the half point down on the Ravens. Not a game I'm in love with. But after cashing with the Panthers and Rams yesterday, hitting two out of three complimentary plays on Sunday, what, I've won nine of my last 10 NFL complimentary plays? I like the Ravens. What can I tell you? And that'll do it. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow.